For those who might not know it, OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. It is a medical condition. It shows an unhealthy fascination or compulsion to keep doing acts and things detrimental to health again and again without taking a break. For the purposes of this episode, I am referring to the intellectual OCD of prominent brown men and women in the United States, all of Indian origin, who look for or just need a forum or a platform or even a venue to take off against India and launch their vitriol against the country. The names of congressmen like Ro Khanna, CNN media anchor Fareed Zakaria and congresswoman Pramila Jaipal immediately come to mind. There are of course countless others, especially in academia and media, what I call brown folks in the ring, Indians by birth or lineage or descent, who look for opportunities to lash out against India and especially the current political dispensation in India. Why is there so much anger and hostility in these folks against India? What makes these people tick again and again in an OCD manner to question their Indian heritage, drum up support against India, galvanize other entities to try and put India in the doghouse? This aberrant behavior needs an explanation, which I will try and give you in this episode. But first, let me welcome everyone to the CAA show in which CAA of course stands for Conversations and Analysis and my name is Jaggi Basin. You can subscribe to our show by pressing the big red subscriber button on your screen. Subscription is of course completely free. Now before I analyze what makes these people do what they do, let me enumerate by examples how these folks have been going hammer and tongs against India. Topping this hall of infamy is Ro Khanna, who is a congressman from California's 17th district. This man was elected by the trust imposed on him by a large section of Indian voters, which he so merrily betrays by his anti-India campaigns. Only recently, in a briefing of the United States House of Armed Services Committee, Ro Khanna gave a video presentation where he questioned India's abstentions at the United Nations when it came to voting on the Ukraine issue. He wanted the US administration to press India to change its position. Not only that, he wanted an exact date from the administration that by when India would be weaned off Russian weaponry. The entire tone and content of Ro Khanna's intervention was incredulous to say the least. He was speaking as if India was a banana client state tuck somewhere in South America which could be brought to heel by strong US disapproval, egged on of course by the redoubtable Ro Khanna. And it is not the first time Ro Khanna has had a go at India. The same man is part of the Congressional Pakistan Caucus, very incredibly supports Pakistan's position on Kashmir. And not to forget, Two years back when Indian from his own constituency protested his support for anti-Gandhi protests. If we find it hard to believe that a man of Indian parentage can be so inimical against a country from where his parents came from, then wait, there's more. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal is on record for having introduced a legislation that questioned the Indian government for its alleged denial of religious freedom to communities in Kashmir. It was a shocking act of betrayal against a country she hails from. And many prominent Indian Americans, even then at that time, sharply criticized her. To quote Indian American attorney Ravi Batra, her resolution mocks America and interferes in a bilateral relationship of India and America. I look upon Pramila Jayapal as completely unprincipled, un-American, anti-Hindu and pro-terror who is shamelessly pantering for political advantage." Unquote. And this brings us to the third talking head on this episode, Fareed Zakaria. Fareed Zakaria is a little more subtle than the other two in his remarks about India, but to my mind, 
His subtle criticisms are more dangerous because of the vast influence he carries as a prominent media commentator. The problem with Zakaria is that in his mind, he is still stuck with the images and profile of India he must have experienced before he left the shores of the country in his teens. The country has evolved and moved ahead tremendously since those times, but not so Zakaria. He is still stuck with the ossified narrative that why has India still not entered the US tents fully to realize its place in the world. He hardly has a kind word to say about Modi and in all his narratives he does not tire to tell all and sundry that India has missed the bus in every possible sense of the word. These three personalities and countless others like them in the US suffer from the classic brown man syndrome which compels them to be more loyal, more obsequious, more beholden to classic western narrative of what India is all about and what it should be. In a racial sense, people like them have picked up and carried it up, carried on the baggage so far loved by the white man. You almost get a sense when you hear these folks talking that they might be addressing an India of the 21st century, but really they are actually making a pitch of presentation for the white folks to hear. The second reality they choose to disregard is the reality what India is all about currently. It might be a fractitious, even chaotic at times, bubbling with nervous energy and disputes, but that is only a small part of the narrative. This actually is India's moment, its time under the sun, its century really, as it moves ahead with zip speed to realize its ambitions, its destiny. The former colonialists, the former imperialists, even the most vibrant democracies like America understand this. But no, our people of Indian origin have closed their eyes to it and get back at us with political science and moral science lectures of the early 20th century. And finally, there is something called a geostrategic reality in which we know that a country like Ukraine, irrespective of what it is going through at right now, has always voted against us in the United Nations on Kashmir. And in the name of the same country, these folks mock us, criticize us. Irrespective of what they say or do, a nation does not become great by embracing prescriptive models of others. It becomes great by following its own path through the fields, however lonely or tough the job might be. That is the truism lost on these brown folks in the ring going round and round in circles. And so on this note, I come to the end of this episode of the CAA show. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode. And if you like our show, subscribe to us. And on this note, it's goodbye and cheers from my end.